Today is a very sad day for Australia. We have a man who served his country with great honour, who took malfeasance and malpractice and negligence and dishonesty to his superiors, that which he uncovered in the military. He was ignored more than once, ignored by the people on the hill, and so he took the information to the ABC so we, the people, could find out about what's going on and what went on in Afghanistan. So David has reported uh, unfair investigation into people they accused of war crimes which weren't. Because what happened, people, is there were significant war crimes going on in Afghanistan. The military ignored it for many, many years and it finally bubbled to the surface. And to counter the bad publicity, they said, we'll go and investigate then. But instead of investigating the war criminals who are still walking around Australia, they started investigating new crimes, suspected crimes, which weren't crimes at all. And David represented those people and he was admonished and struck down. So he released the information to the ABC and with it he bundled up a pack of war crime reports which had been completely ignored by the media and by the government and by the ADF. So David is a military whistleblower. His intention wasn't the war criminals, but the brass and the people on the hill who are ignoring these war crimes. And I think it's a great shame. Do you think so too? So now we have a dark day. We have war criminals walking around Australia and the guy who reported the truth is going to be sentenced today, quite possibly for a custodial sentence. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I've lost a lot of in our judiciary. They're making decisions, it seems, we're not sure if it's coming from here, the Hill or the ADF. But David, should have been allowed to use the public interest defence which was put out in 2014 by Mr Dreyfus. It was a very poorly structured document and it basically doesn't work. And regardless, they still denied him an application to use the defence in public interest. And I'm not sure about you, but I really want to know what's going on over there if people are unlawfully killing civilians in Afghanistan, Iraq or anywhere else in the world. And they should be uncovered and they should be exposed. And that's what David's intention was, to bring the brass out because they're the ones that were negligent here. So they've ganged up against him and now we have a court case which has been going on for years. It's destroyed his family, his relationships, his marriage and his finances, and of course, emotionally, you can imagine David is uh, struggling. Uh, not many people could withstand what he's been through. So, it's a terrible state of affairs. We don't know what the sentence will be today. None of us know, it could be a home detention, or it could be several years in prison, or it could be decades in prison. Regardless, we will not stop. Will you stop fighting? Absolutely not. So I think the defence brass has let us down. They've let David down and they've prosecuted him and then awarded themselves medals. So the only honest guy here for the, in the war crimes thing is David McBride. And if you're wondering what happened to the 29 people who were indicted to be investigated for alleged war crimes following the Brereton inquiry, Please come and tell me because it seems it's just been swept under the rug, it's gone quiet, gone to ground. Because we wouldn't want to expose the war criminals because the war criminals would expose the fact that the defence personnel, the defence brass, the, uh, the officers, and it goes all the way to the top, ladies and gentlemen, all the way to the top. They knew about it and nothing was done. Do you think that's a shame? Yeah. So do I. We are expecting to see David, the family and the legal team arriving here at approximately 9.20 today. The hearing starts at 10 o'clock. But let's get started. Let's make some noise. Please give it up 
Rex Patrick. Hey, look, thanks everyone for coming out here today. That's really fantastic to see a great crowd. I'm Rex Patrick. I'm a former senator for South Australia, but I'm also the founder of the Whistleblower Justice Fund. Um, and we have been uh, supported by a whole range of people in that particular activity. We do have our um, billboard uh, sitting here in Tosca, who's uh, our organiser. Just for the record, if there is to be a tar parking ticket, I will pay the fine. So there's my first bit of civil disobedience uh, here this morning. Our whistleblower laws are broken. That's not something that I might say, that's something the Attorney General would say. He has promised, going into the past election, that he would fix our whistleblower laws. Firstly, I'll point out he hasn't. But secondly, he's allowing people who selflessly called out misconduct, selflessly uh, revealed uh, improper uh, conduct, conduct, in some cases really severe, and are now, for their selflessness, facing some form of prosecution. And we, of course, see today here with uh, David McBride, uh, he's uh, going to pay a fairly significant price for what he's done. He's already paid a fairly significant price for the good that he has done. It turns out that if you want to blow the whistle here in Australia, uh, inside government, you have to be a KC. That's how broken our laws are. It turns out there's not a lot of KCs working inside government, uh, so it really is uh, a situation where we don't have um, the ability for any of our public servants, our good public servants, to call out that misconduct and to blow the whistle pro properly. Our, our laws are broken. The, uh, the difficulty we have of course, is that the courts, and I have offer no criticism of the court, the court uh, basically enforces the law as the parliament has decided uh, what it is. So we can't criticise the courts in conducting uh, their uh, role. And that's the sad thing. In both the case of David McBride and, and Richard Boyle, we've got a situation where in the process of blowing the whistle, people have tripped up, they've ended up doing something that's unlawful, and the courts can only do what they are supposed to do, and that is to enforce the law. And it is for that reason that the Parliament back in 1901 gave the Attorney General a power to intervene in cases where misjustice will occur because of these sorts of circumstances. Section 71 of the Judiciary Act allows the Attorney General to intervene in a case and say, this is not right. Attorney General Mark Dreyfus knows exactly what's happened with David McBride, knows the good that he's done, uh, knows um, the great service that he's done to the Australian Defence Force, for example, who don't want to be associated with the sort of conduct that we saw taking place in Afghanistan. There was a small cohort of people doing the wrong thing. David has Done a, you know, done a great service to Australia, to the ADF, uh, uh, and everyone should be proud of what he's done. The same with Richard Boyle. He's done the right thing, but he's tripped up and he finds himself now facing uh, a prosecution. So let's everyone be clear about what's happening here today. We're here for two reasons and two reasons alone. The first of those reasons is that David McBride did his job. And the second of those reasons is Mark Dreyfus has not done his job. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. We've, we've had a lot of great speakers and great supporters, and, and one of them was uh, David Shoebridge, who has been outstanding in defending whistleblowers, advocating for changes to the Whistleblower Protection Act. And uh, one of the things that always stuck with me that David Shoebridge said was, it should never be a crime to tell the truth. Let's just start and end with that. It should never be a crime to tell the truth. And one of the great truth tellers we have in the media is none other than Michael West. So Michael, come up and give us some of your prayers and wisdom.
Great to see a fantastic turnout here, guys. Well done. Um, this is a huge day uh, for justice in Australia. We don't know whether we'll get a decision today or tomorrow, whether it'll be put off again. But the reason this is so enormous is because justice should be seen to be done as well as actually being done. Obviously, it hasn't been done already because David has been persecuted as much as prosecuted for doing the right thing, for a sense, essentially an administrative carriage of his duties and for holding to the principles of accountability and transparency, just doing the right thing. So if there is a custodial sentence, there's a real problem for the system of justice in Australia because the perception already is there is a rising distrust in institutions generally of power, government and corporate. And so the government is in a bit of a bind as is the judiciary because there is a general acknowledgement that David has done the right thing, not just from us, his supporters and the people close to him in the media, but generally in the public. So if he is punished with a custodial sentence, there will be further distrust of the institutions of power in Australia and in the system of justice because the people, and it's quite well trumpeted via fancy defamation trials with prancing lawyers and media titans fighting each other in defamation battles, 35 or 40 million dollars the Ben Robert Smith case cost. We're paying for that because we pay for the courts as well as the media barons paying their lawyers. So we know there's war crimes, they're well documented, but none have been prosecuted. Shame. It's a shame on this country that, and it's a massive failure of justice, that murders of innocent people have not been prosecuted. But here's a guy, a lawyer, doing his job, who is the one facing a jail sentence. So therefore it is a huge day, uh, probably the biggest day in Australian justice for a long time. We know obviously with Julian Assange, um, that is a global miscarriage of justice on an enormous scale. But that is out of the hands thanks to the pusillanimous behaviour of our leaders unable to get Julian home. That's out of the hands of the Australian justice system. But David is the marquee case. And if David is further persecuted for having done his job, that's a shame on the Australian justice system. So the government and the system of justice has got itself in a bit of a bind here and it will not go away until he is free to spend his time with his daughters, with his family and live as a free man. So let's all give a round of applause to David for being strong, because it must be a terrible thing. Please put your hands together for the former Attorney General of the ACT and a fantastic lawyer defending Dan Duggan currently, Bernard Cleary. Thank you. Good morning. How many times have we been out here in the cold over the last five years? How many times have we stood here reflecting the mood of this country? The disconnect in this country is, and I'll give you one example I know personally of. For 40 years I worked for the Timorese. Not once in 40 years did any member of the Australian public ever rebuke me for helping the Timorese? So who was approving the exploitation of them? Now talk about David McBride. There have been some bubbles in the stream about his motives. That's, of course, what happens. But David is a truth teller. 
And the problem at the moment in Australia is that we live in an unjust society. So many people can tell you that. It is unjust not to have effective whistleblower laws. And that's not an issue in the political divide. It's not an issue on the left, it's not an issue on the right. And that's because, and that's what our leadership misses, this is about values. It's about values. It owns no political direction. It's about decency and justice in our community. And David reflects once again the vast distance between our political leaders at the moment and the public mood. The public mood is not to see David McBride jail today. That's the public mood. And what is the political mood? Well, you don't know. You don't know. There's a sort of neutral atmosphere coming from Capitol Hill. The Greens are speaking out, the Teals are speaking out. Individual members of the Labor Party and the Liberal Party speak out at great risk to themselves. The irony is that within the parties, they need whistleblower protection too. That's a great irony. But now, there is a very deep abiding issue that we're here about today. And that is whether there is a true system of justice in our country. For four years in this court behind me, I just wanted to get into the witness stand and say publicly what the issue was that I was being prosecuted for, but it was secret. I was not allowed to be a truth teller, even in court. And, and even in court, in an extraordinary fashion that flash is back to the Star Chamber days, the judge, Justice David Mossop, against our wishes, received a secret cachet from the Attorney General. A secret document that we weren't allowed to know of. In our court system in the 21st century, in a criminal trial, the judge received a secret cachet. Now that belonged back in Star Chamber days, but the law that allowed that was passed by both parties, both major parties, in 2004, the National Security Legislation. And that was how it was passed, in response to terrorism. But the one person that all of those laws in 2004, in response to terrorism, that those laws were used against, was me. Now, there was a great Ginsburg period in the United States Supreme Court, when justice flowed out of that wonderful Supreme Court in that period. And that there was a famous case of the state versus Leon. And the judgment of the court was that when a court refuses to look at palpable injustice and impropriety, the court becomes but an extension of the executive. And that is our challenge today in our court system. The courts have been rendered docile by legislation that should never have been passed through the parliament. And the only way to get rid of that legislation is to effectively neutralise it with proper whistleblower laws. Read Adele Ferguson today in the Sydney Morning Herald. If that paper carries the message, it truly establishes that whistleblowing is not a matter in the political divide, it's a matter of values. Now, whatever happens to David today, I can't comment on or predict. I have a grim foreboding. We like David. He has a lovely family. He's an Australian, once again, needing a dose of justice. Will he get it? Let's see. And we'll move on and we'll continue to assist him if it doesn't go well. Thank you. I have uh, a message here from uh,
Bernard's client, Saffron Duggan, or the wife of Bernard's client, and she asked for this message to be read out to you all today. I apologize for not being able to make it today. Myself, my family, and my husband, Dan, send our best wishes and support to David on this day in another example of an unjust prosecution of an Australian citizen. David's situation and that of my husband, Dan, are both examples of a weaponized legal system that has little regard for freedom, the rights of individuals or families. Our hearts go out to David and his family, his two beautiful daughters, who are also forced to face the consequences of his unjust prosecution. Every single day I ask myself, how can this be happening to Australian families like ours, to our partners, to our children? How can I be living in Australia in an age where Canberra looks the other way? Shame. I say no, we are so much better than this. My husband Dan has been in maximum security isolation in a two metre by four metre cell for over 18 months with no local charges, convictions or criminal background of any kind. Over 550 days in solitary confinement on the say-so of a foreign power. He wasn't allowed out at all for seven months and now gets into a yard by himself when it suits the authorities. Certainly not every day. We only get to see him for one hour a week. He is suffering terribly. And so are we, his family. This is a good man, a man who has been a permanent resident of Australia since 2002, who became a citizen on January 26, 2012, and who calls Australia home. In Australia, we pride ourselves on transparent government and the right to a fair hearing in court. Situations like David's and Dan's, where Australians are being used as political scapegoats, cannot stand. It's time for the Prime Minister and politicians in Canberra to prove the value of Australian citizenship and our nation's sovereignty. I am horrified at this prosecution of both David and of my husband Dan and the damage it's doing to them and to their loved ones. We won't give up. Let's stand together for justice. case matters a lot. There's a lot hanging on this. It matters a lot to David and to his family and it matters to our democracy and therefore to every one of us. We stand in solidarity with David as he continues to pay a very heavy price for acting according to his conscience and that price is the relentless persecution by our own government. And we bear witness to this legal circus in which an Australian is put on trial for attempting to bring to light and to get some accountability for crimes that he was aware of within our military forces. And we know it doesn't need to be this way. We know that Attorney General Mark Dreyfus has exercised his power to drop the prosecution of Bernard Caleri, as we've just heard, for Bernard's alleged role in exposing Australia's spying on East Timor. And even in that case, there is still secrecy around some parts of that terrible, dark history of Australia. And we know that Attorney General Dreyfus could make the same call for David McBride and for ATO whistleblower Richard Boyle. But our Attorney General has chosen not to do so. And meanwhile, Julian Assange is languishing in prison in Belmarsh in London, still at the mercy of our so-called allies, the US and the UK. If David McBride goes to prison, this will be an absolute travesty 
of what our nation stands for. Instead of preaching democracy to other nations, Australia, we must get our own house in order first and practice true democracy in this country. Rather than secrecy, we need far greater transparency. Many Australians, as we've, as we've heard, are extremely concerned about the extent of government lying, secrecy and obf obfuscation in this country to which we are subject. We're not allowed to know what weapons Australia is selling to other nations, including what weapons have been sold to Israel and to other nations in the Middle East. And when questions are asked about this, word games are played about, oh no, they're not weapons, they're weapons parts. It's ridiculous, it's absurd, and it's an insult to our democracy. There is, there is no transparency about where Australia's military personnel and assets are actually deployed. In the case of the recent US and UK attacks on Yemen, Australians heard about our nation's support for these attacks, not from our own government, but from the US President. We need strong protection for whistleblowers, and this should be legislated by the current government in the current term of their government. We need genuine media freedom and not a situation where journalists are intimidated into silence so that we don't know, we don't even know what our country is doing in places like Iraq, Afghanistan, the Middle East and anywhere else on the planet. And we need truth tellers, people whose actions reflect moral values. So we thank David McBride for serving our country so diligently and with such apparent strength and at great personal cost. What he is doing and what we are doing here in supporting him matters a lot to each of us, to our democracy and to David and his rights as an Australian citizen. So we stand in support of David and thank him for what he is doing. Prosecuting whistleblowers is not okay. It, it's really as simple as that. I like to find truth because really no more needs to be said. This is about the truth. It's about the role of transparency and accountability in our democracy. And when we prosecute whistleblowers, we don't get the truth. As I drove here, I was reflecting on how many times we've been here for Bernard and Witness K, for David in Adelaide, for Richard Boyle. And yet still this injustice continues. It began under the last government and it continues under this government. The government has the power to stop prosecuting whistleblowers. We know that because they did the right thing in Bernard's case. And we commend the government for doing that, but we don't commend it for continuing to oversee the unjust prosecution of whistleblowers, including David McBride and Richard Boyle. Of course, the cases crystallise the injustice, but what we don't see is the effect of these cases on people who might blow the whistle. Adele Ferguson on ABC Radio National this morning talked about how hard it is to do her job as one of Australia's leading investigative journalists when people don't speak up. I'm a lawyer, I act for whistleblowers, I speak to people every day who are afraid of speaking up. And when people don't speak up to me and they don't speak up to Adele and some of the excellent journalists we have here today, our democracy suffers. And so while this case crystallised the injustice faced by whistleblowers, it has a deep chilling effect that corrodes our democracy. That's why it's so important that the government does the right thing, stops prosecuting whistleblowers, fixes whistleblowing law and establishes a whistleblower protection authority. I'm an optimist at heart and I really hope the injustice 
that's being experienced today, is being experienced in Adelaide in Richard Boyle's case, was experienced by Bernard and Witness K, that these are the beginning of a moment where we shift our focus and we say whistleblowers need to be protected, not punished. I think the groundswell of public support we've seen for whistleblowers in recent years has been heartening, but now it's time for the government to act. I deeply hope we don't have images of Dave McBride being taken away to prison, but if we do, I hope that it counts. And I hope that this is the beginning of positive change and we get better whistleblowing laws and we get a whistleblower protection authority so that these laws can work and people can speak up because ultimately that goes to the heart of our democracy. It goes to truth. Thank you. I've just received a message from Senator David Shoebridge, which he's asked me to read out to you. David McBride isn't an angel or a saint. He is something far simpler. He is a whistleblower. When he spoke his truth to power about war crimes in Afghanistan, he was assaulted by powerful people who wanted him silenced. In the face of this, he stood firm. As a Green Senator today, I stand by David as he faces sentencing for the crime of telling us all the truth. When David walks into court today, those who committed the war crimes, who ordered the war crimes, and then covered up the war crimes, will still be walking free. If this is justice, then it's no justice that I understand. And that's from Senator David Shubert. <laughs> Next we have two amazing whistleblowers who walked, who took the talk and walked the walk and paid the price. Please welcome Troy Stoltz and Jeff Morris. Hey, Jeff. They make a great double act. Here they are. Like Albo and Dreyfus. Good comedy show. We, we could be brothers, mate. From another mother. Welcome everyone here this morning. It, it is just unbelievable that we stand here watching a, a man that of high integrity and distinction that did his job. He was just doing his job. He didn't want any medals, any recognition, but he couldn't stand still and see what was being conducted and what was going on around him. So the testament of a, a character in that position, what do you do with that information? Do you shut your eyes, turn a blind eye, continue on as normal, or do you do something about it? And, and that's what David's done. Um, he's a brother to us, and um, if I could go inside and do time with him, I'd go, today, tomorrow, any time. They're the sort of people that you want to stand with. Jeff, David, Ken Quinlan, Sharon Kelsey, the list goes on and on. Richard Boyle. There is so many people which must make us wonder what's the government's concept? What are they thinking? This is not, this is becoming a common occurrence. When will it stop? And when will the government do the right thing and, and look at investigating and exploring the substance of the allegations rather than making the whistleblowers dance to the tunes and explain themselves and let the perpetrators remain free. Um, it, it's just disgraceful. And reward those that um, turn a blind eye, promotions within the military, promotions within government and um, Where's Stephen Smith this morning? This was on his watch. Where's he? Oh, he's been appointed a High Commissioner of the UK. Well, surprise, surprise. I think Australians have had enough of the behaviour of uh, Liberal and Labor in this country. And, you know, we need the um, calibre of shame on the Labor. Shame. We need the calibre of uh, David Shoebridge, Andrew Wilkie, some of the decent politicians running this country, because these guys are just taking it into the gutter. And let's show them at the next election, and let's vote anyone but Liberal or Labor.
Thanks, Troy. Uh, there's actually a third whistleblower here today who came along to support David as well, and that's Kim Quinlan, over there by the fire truck. Now, whistleblowers are known for being David taking on Goliath, and Kim's has taken on uh, the Shell Oil Company. Uh, which is which is no 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 small antagonist. Uh, Kent's actually come down from Queensland today to be with David, and that's how strongly that's how strongly uh, whistleblowers feel about David McBride. As as Troy was just saying, there's a group of us who strongly support David. In fact, to my knowledge, every whistleblower in Australia. And there's, there's hundreds of us. Every whistleblower in Australia supports David. Now, we know what's involved when you go up against a powerful institution, public or private, or even the federal government. We know what comes with that. What often comes with that, it's called Davo tactics. And part of that is to smear the whistleblower to attack their credibility. Well, let me tell you, there's not one whistleblower in this country that doubts David McBride one iota. We are 100% behind him. We all stand with him. We realised a few years ago, not only have we had the same experience in different settings, but we were all attacking different parts of the same problem. This country has gone to the dogs. It is utterly corrupt. Every government in this country you care to think about is utterly corrupt. And it doesn't matter whether they're Liberal or Labor, they're basically just two sides of the same bad penny. Or two cheeks of the same ass! In, in Tasmania, uh, at the moment, thanks to a whistleblower, another whistleblower, Alicia McBride, She's exposed institutional child abuse, presided over by the Tasmanian government. There's been a commission of inquiry and they have done precisely nothing to implement the findings. So it's at that point you conclude they're covering up and protecting pedophiles. So David, David's got the big daddy, I suppose, of them all. He has taken on effectively the federal government. Now they have a unique power, which is a complete conflict of interest, of course, uh, and a violation of the separation of powers. The federal government in this case, in going after David McBride, is effectively acting as judge, jury, prosecutor. It's an absolute put up job. What a show trial. They gave David some evidence, some documents. They prepared a defence based on that, and at the last minute when they're in court, the federal government swoops in and says, oh, we're taking those documents back. Not, not, not releasing them in the first place, taking them back on national security grounds. So there you are at the doors of the court. Your case has just been taken away from you. That's what, that's what I call a show trial. It's a farce. And that is what the Albanese government has done. Now, when, when a government actually goes to the extreme step of prosecuting the supplies, they are sending a very clear message. They're saying, obviously, we don't want whistleblowers. And they're sending a message that we don't want whistleblowers because we are corrupt. And we know we're corrupt. We've set up a farcical knack which is basically going to be another toothless tiger because of the near of window dressing. But at the end of the day, they don't, they're, they're making an example of David because they don't want whistleblowers. They know they've got something to hide. The Albanese government has made a deliberate decision to collude with the corrupt generals in the military hierarchy. Who not, only, who not only facilitated war crimes, watched them taking place and did nothing, and then, and then covered them up. 
They're now trying to cover up the cover-up. And part of this cover-up of the cover-up is prosecuting David McBride to protect their own, or conceal their own corruption. Now, the truth will come out. David's not alone. There are a lot of people with David. Today will not be the end. If anybody thinks this is the end, I'm sure there's a lot of people hoping that it will be, like people looking over their shoulder. They're going to be sadly disappointed. This will go on until we tear down this corrupt edifice, which is the government of this country. Thank you. In just under 10 minutes, David is due to arrive here at court with his family and legal team. I have a message that I've been asked to read out from Karen Percy, the Federal President of the Media Section of the Media Entertainment and Arts Alliance. Karen says, media freedom is under threat in this country and governments at all levels must commit to protecting whistleblowers and journalists. The public has a right to know what its governments are doing. Without whistleblowers and journalists, corruption can flourish. A mature democracy does not shy away from scrutiny. So it's time our political leaders truly embrace transparency and accountability. Otherwise, we are right to ask, what do they have to hide? Thanks to all those who have supported the many campaigns over the years to hold power to account. Fight on. Our final speaker before the family and David arrives is none other than Emma Davidson, who is Minister for Everybody. <laughs> She has so many portfolios, I didn't want to start. I mean, there's, there's veterans, there's mental health, there's... Emma, come and tell us. Minister for the People. Hi. Uh, let me begin by saying Dawara Nuna, Dawara Nunawal. This is Nunawal country, and I know that there are many people and families who have a deep connection to the lands of Canberra and the region. So I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land and sovereignty was never ceded. Uh, so my name is Emma Davidson. I'm a Greens Minister in the ACT Government. I'm your Minister for Mental Health, Minister for Corrections and Justice Health, Minister for Population Health, uh, Minister for Community Services, Seniors and Veterans. Um, so. I do have a lot of responsibilities here to make sure that people are looked after in our justice system. And what I can assure you is that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So it is really important that we think about what we choose to prosecute as a community, how we go about that, how we make sure that people's rights are protected in that process. And what I can tell you from what I've seen over the last few years is that this prosecution against David McBride has never been in the public interest. The millions of dollars that have been spent on that prosecution have never been in the public interest. The pain and difficulty that it has caused for his family, but also for our wider community, has never been in the public interest. Absolutely, shame. So I am here today, like all of you, because I want to see the right things being done. I want to see justice. Now, it is really important when we think about um, who David is, that we, we know that he is a person with a full life, uh, with many responsibilities beyond just the huge responsibility of what he has done within this case. He's a father, check one, two, a father, a friend, uh, he is a, a person with a long career uh, and he is also a, an author. 
So when I think about what the future holds for him, the thing that I think about the most is his children and his family and his ability to maintain those connections with them uh, and to stay strong. So I hope that uh, all of you here today will be able to send all of your strength to him and to his family and friends for whatever comes next in the future. But no matter what, we must remember that this prosecution was never in the public interest. Thank you. This is Cathy Bogan at the Supreme Court in the Australian Capital Territory. Any moment now, we expect to see David McBride arrive with his lawyers, with his defence, to be sentenced. And we will be going in there to do our best to report live on the proceedings inside the court. David has got his dog. Hello there. I have, what can we expect today? Are we hopeful? <laughs> yes, very hopeful, very bloody hopeful. That'd be insane, I think, but it might be. Yeah. Oh, look who got here. Look who got here, uh, oh, oh. the truck got made. <laughs> Mark, are we going to hear some new evidence today? Oh. I can't think, I can't think, I think so. <laughs> Well, I don't really think about that. I just hope to hold myself held feet up high with dignity and whatever happens um, uh, to myself, my family, and uh, the army proud. I say to the federal government, stop talking about doing the right thing and actually doing the right thing. It must be quite an emotional morning for you with your family here. Yeah. Yes, it is, but they have been incredibly supportive and uh, I'm so proud of them. I think that they make me happy and they make me proud of the hand they still think ABC got the story wrong? <laughs> Yes, I think they do. <laughs> well, it depends. Four quarters. But that's all right. The original story. Uh, I think it's really a, a bad a, a bad general story, yeah. I stand by that. Uh, bad soldiers as well. But uh, plenty of people have come for the soldiers, and it's about time we started looking at the generals as well. How would you like the public to say what you did ultimately in the day? Uh, as someone that stood up for Australian values in the face of a government who has lost Do you regret it? No, I've never been so proud to be an Australian. Uh, I've never been uh, so proud of my family and my supporters and I uh, will never take the backwards step.